So take a, let's take a look at how do we create some plastics and how VRA 5.1 differs by using, uh, compared to using uh, the approach that was done previously. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up my shader ball and I'm going to open up a material. Here we go, slate material. And I'm going to start on the uh, active shade. All right, so this is a standard V-Ray material. Uh, in the past, the way that you would create a plastic was pretty much very simple. What you would need to do is define what sort of a diffuse you would want. So click over here, choose whatever color you want. Let's go with something like reddish. Let's go with something maybe like this. That's good enough. And plastic is very simple because it's just a reflective surface. So in the reflection, we give it uh, the amount of uh, reflection that we want. And later on, what we do is we just control how much glossiness we add to this. So if we want this thing to be glossy, we go with one. If we want it to be more uh, rougher, we go with 0 0.8 and you get something like this. So all in all, a very fast way of creating a uh, shader that looks pretty much like plastic. But now, there is another way. If you want to go ahead and create this thing to a bit of a more intricate look, what you would do is you would, in your glossiness level, you would just plug in a V-Ray uh, bitmap. And from here, we would just go in, choose one of our grunge maps. So let's click here. And from the folder where you have all of the uh, textures, uh, we can just select one of, of the, our uh, grunge maps in here. So we just want to get something that's that has a uh, variance between black and white. So something like this would work, or even something like this one. All right, click OK. And by just doing this, as we can see, we are uh, starting to get uh, a bit more of this uh, breakup in the reflection. Now, generally, what you would do is you go in here, reduce the amount of the blend, because when it's at 100, it's taking all of the information from the map. So if we go and reduce this to like 20, that's enough just to break up the reflection for this. Now, this is in theory, the simplest way to create something as a plastic uh, by using the glossiness workflow. But thanks to Vray 5 and 5.1, we have another way of creating uh, materials here. And that is more in line with uh, different um, softwares and packages that do a lot of material working like Unreal or the Substance Package. Namely, instead of using the glossiness workflow for dealing with reflections, what they do is they use a roughness system. And with V-Ray 5, we can actually use that system here as well. And the way that you do this is very actually very simple. Uh, all you gotta do is you take your basic uh, V-Ray material and under the BRDF section, here underneath the uh, type of uh, BRDF, you have use glossiness or use roughness. Now, when you go over it, it's going to tell you that these options control how reflection glossiness is interpreted. So if you click on it, what you're going to notice is right away this thing changes. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is turn off, uh, I'm going to clear this texture and put this thing back to one. So once this thing is done, what you want to do is generally uh, the reflection, you just crank it up all the way up. And once this thing is done, now what you're gonna notice is that even though this is at one, it is no longer reflective. And the reason for this is that roughness is calculated at a different rate when you're using the roughness for uh, reflections. So if I go to zero, now you're going to get a very reflective or 100% reflective uh, surface, while one is pretty much non-reflective. So it's sort of an uh, inverse version. So now, if I go ahead and put 0 0.2, that will give me a more matte uh, surface. Now, the interesting, here, uh, the interesting thing here is that you can increase this. So let's go with 0 0.1. 
something like this. Now you can increase this by changing the angle of reflection. And that you would do by changing the IOR on your refraction. So by default, this thing is set up to 1.6 and it's uh, locked in. And the, the interesting thing by using this roughness approach is that it's very, very in line with physical correct materials. So this means that the uh, IORs will generally range between uh, 1.4 to 1.65. And you have certain materials that go well above it, which are uh, metals, water, or diamonds. But there is a pretty extensive list on what IOR to use for those ones. But generally, for most of the materials that you're going to use, you're going to use an uh, option between 1.4 and 1.65. Now, if we change the IOR on the refraction here, so let's go to 1.2. What you're going to notice is that uh, the reflection uh, got really dialed down. If we go for something like 2, you're going to see that we have much more reflection coming in and we can see a lot more of the reflections of the room. I'm going to put it back to 1.6 and uh, stop it in here. Now, other thing that I would do is if we're going to use this approach, what I want to do is I want to retain this same color. But make sure that if uh, this is the color I want to use, I'm using a V-Ray map to uh, push this thing. So what I'm going to do is from the diffuse map, I'm going to take out a V-Ray color node here. And once this thing is in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this uh, color and put it in here. So now since I'm using a V-Ray color, this thing is translating uh, correctly. But also take into account the fact that we are working with the ACES workflow in which I showed you in uh, one of the previous videos how to set up. So we need to set up the RGB primaries here. Since this is a color for the uh, RGB primaries from none, I need to set it to sRGB primaries. And once we do this, you can see right away that the color shifted. So now this is the true RGB color for setting up your material or setting up your plastic material. Now to make it more interesting, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to change my lighting because at the moment I think it's a bit too dark. So in my HDRI image, all I'm going to do is just increase the render multiplier to something like 2. This is going to give me more light to work with. Now, since we are in the ACES workflow, we can still notice that we have quite a bit of a, a stronger uh, shadow. So that's uh, OK. Now, following the same route that we took when we uh, created our original shader, what, I, uh, what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to slot this thing or this bitmap. Let's open it up and I'm going to put it into my refraction or, or reflection roughness. There we go. So come over here and just so I can see how this thing looks, what I'm going to do is going to select this and over here, just click on isolate selected. Now this is going to show me how this map is being applied in here. And I think this is actually looking just fine for now. All right, let's go back and let's change how much this thing is being uh, used for. So I can see that about 10% of this thing is being taken from uh, the map. And the other one is the 0 0.1. Let's try 0 0.3 and see how that's going to look. All right, that, that's going to be a bit uh, better because I can see the map effect a bit more for now. So I'm going to leave it as a frosty glass or a looking or frosted uh, plastic look. So let's increase this to 50 so it's more visible. All right, now I can actually see this thing better. Just select this piece over here. There we go. So all in all, it's starting to shape up interesting. But the problem at the moment here is that I can see that some of these uh, end results here are either too shiny or too dark. So what I want to do is I want to lessen the transition between those highs and lows. Now, the, re the way that I can do that is by going into my bitmap and from here, I can uh, scroll all the way down to the output and change the uh, color map. 
but I actually want to use this same map as a uh, bump map as well. So what I'm going to do is from here, just take a map, go to V-Ray and or actually go to general. And from here, just use a output map. Again, this is the same thing that we have in our V-Ray bitmap, but by just doing it like this, I can change these values without changing the core values of the map. So while here, I'm going to enable the color map, take the lows over here and increase them up to like something like 0 0.2. That should remove those uh, very dark places and also remove this thing for like 20%, so 0 0.8. And there we go. So we have squished all of those uh, values and we, uh, we've negated the top 20 and uh, low 20% of the map. So it should give us a more uniform look across. Now, having said this, we haven't changed anything for the map, so we can use this thing for a bump map as well. To do this, what I'm gonna do is go from my uh, V-Ray material and from the bump map, just drag out a node and from here go to V-Ray and choose a V-Ray normal map node. Now this will create a node that has two inputs for a normal map and a bump map. Now I'm going to use a bump map for this. So go from here, slot it into the bump map. And this is going to give me this sort of a result. Now this, uh, this tends to be a bit too strong of a result. So what I want to do is, well, let's just take one sample here and reduce this to maybe like 10% or 0 0.1. Okay. Looks a bit better. Now, depending on what sort of a plastic look you're going for, you could go with this if you're going after rough plastic. But if you're going after like a toy or something similar that has very fine grain, you might want to even go lower in this. So let's go with 0 0.05 and uh, I might even go lower than 0 0.02. Okay, so not bad. It kind of, like I said, it kind of depends on what kind of a look you're going for. But for this, for plastic, I think this is going to look just fine. Now, one of the other things that I do want to address with this is uh, we want to go over and add a bit of uh, surface irregularity. Now, this uh, sort of an approach is very good when you're using it for creating windows, and that is to use a normal map to basically break up the surface. So what I'm going to do is, again, from here, just right click from Maps, General, and put in a noise map. All right, and for the noise map, let's just double click on it. I can reduce the size to something like maybe 10 and drag this thing into the normal map. Now, right away, I can see a bit of a problem. Uh, namely, when we put it in here, the final output is not right, something is wrong. The reason for this is that the input data coming from this uh, image over here is uh, going into the normal map, but the data does not compute with a normal information. So what we need to do before we slot this thing into the normal map is from here, I want to go over to the maps in V-Ray and choose a V-Ray color or V-Ray bump to normal, like this. So this will take all the information from the noise map, convert it to a normal map, and now we can slot it into the normal map over here. That should get rid of all of that uh, problem that we had previously. Now, what I want to do again is uh, be very subtle with this uh, change. Like I can leave it like this if uh, this is the warped look that I'm going for the surface, but I actually want this thing to be very uh, subtle. So let's try it with 0 0.5 or 0 0.1. So 10% of that effect. And that's gonna look just fine for what we're going for. So all in all, now I have this texture is driving my uh, entire shader. Let's just make this thing a bit more compact. 
There we go. And this is controlling my color. So all in all, at the moment, this is a good representation for a basic plastic material. And basically, before we call it a quits, there's one other thing that we might uh, think about adding on a plastic material. But this is very dependent on whether or not uh, your model that you're trying to create the plastic for has any thickness to it. What I mean by this is, for example, if, let's, let's take a, a look at this uh, image over here. Uh, as you can see here, this is not a transparent look. But since the thickness here is a bit uh, on the... On the thin side, you can see through it to a certain uh, extent as light can pass through it. Now, luckily for us, V-Ray 5 has a different way or, or a new way of dealing with this. And that is with the translucency mode. Now, how this thing works is when you go over to the none, you can choose volumetric or SSS. In this case, what we want to do is we want to use a subsurface scattering translucency. And as soon as we click on this, you're going to notice this thing changes. Now, here we have a couple of things that come into play, namely this, the scatter radius and the scatter color as well as the amount. Now, the amount here is how uh, much subsurface scattering we're going to get. So if I go to 0 0.1, you're going to notice that we have uh, a bit of uh, um, subscattering surface uh, happening. And this is going to be very depending on what sort of a look you're trying to go to. Now, I'm not going to try to make a very fancy looking uh, plastic on this. So instead of by uh, choosing different colors or different uh, subsurface colors, I'm just going to take the subsurface color that we are using for the diffuse, instance it over here. And I can even instance it to the scatter radius. There we go. So by just doing this, and uh, now at the edges, I can actually see a bit of uh, light coming in and it's going to make them a a look a bit feathered. But in order to do this, uh, in order to make this thing more visible, what I would have to do is increase the scale or how far those rays are going to go before I start seeing the translucency effect. Now, I can increase this thing to 5 or even uh, higher, 10. But take into account another thing. If you do it at uh, higher uh, values, what you're basically going to end up with is having to pay the price in rendering time because this will increase your rendering times. So if you go with something like five centimeters, uh, the light is not going to tr uh, travel all the way. So it's going to be uh, less. So if I go in and just maybe lighten up this color a bit, maybe something like this and compare it to what I'm seeing over here. This might actually look a bit better, and especially if we go in and reduce the roughness to zero point, maybe one. And there we go. So with this sort of a look, especially the, for the roughness, we reduce uh, the mixing rate. We get something very similar to what I'm seeing in this uh, image over here. So by using this, we more or less now know how to create a plastic material by using the uh, roughness workflow and uh, using all the changes that uh, V-Ray 5.1 brings with it. Now, the thing here is, like I said, this is very easy to change because if you want to have a different uh, material or a different color, all you got to do is just go into your very color and from here choose a different uh, main color and your entire plastic look will change with it. Also, if you want to change how the glossiness or in this case the roughness map looks you just go over here and exchange uh, this map with whatever map you would like to have and just like this you can uh, use this uh, material to render pretty much any sort of a plastic surface that you might need for your projects 
And before we finish, I just want to show you one more thing, namely these three images that you're seeing in front of you. Now, these three are the renders that I've made from this shader that we created over here. And the way that they differ is how that they were uh, by how they were made. The first image is the specular workflow where we basically set up the diffuse, we set up the reflection, and we break up the uh, reflection with a uh, roughness map. Now, the second image is the new uh, approach that we took, but the SSS has been set up on two centimeters. So the light is traveling only about two centimeters uh, within the surface of the map. Now, this is very dependent on how it's going to look based on how large your model is. So this can vary quite a bit. Now, one of the things that you can notice on this image is that the corners are a bit lighter because we have a bit of scattering on light in there. But where this thing gets to be a lot more interesting is if you take a look at the third image. Now, in the third image, the SSS has been set up to go to around 10 centimeters. Now, this is uh, what, it, uh, what it's doing is making the entire model look a bit more uh, transparent, even though it is not. And it is very visible in the uh, area around the shadows where you can actually see that there is some uh, red color going into the shadows. And that is because light is going through the entire model and it's passing through making sort of a fake caustics. Now, again, I will note it one more time that if you're going to use SSS with a large uh, number for the depth Take into account that this will increase your render times. It will make your uh, shader look a bit different. And also another thing that I would like to note here is that if you take a look at the main body of our model, you're gonna notice that the color is not very uniform. And the reason for this is that we, ha we did put a bump map that is basically making the entire surface being un uh, uneven. And that unevenness is, uh, go, uh, is actually changing how far those ray tracing or those rays will go inside the uh, material. So hence, we're getting a bit of a color unevenness on the surface.